Start saying how are you when starting conversations with someone new in English and use these better advanced English vocabulary and phrases to have more meaningful conversations in English. As there are better phrases, expressions and vocabulary you need to be using to have more meaningful conversations with other English speakers. In this video lesson I will teach you 30 advanced English vocabulary and phrases you need to be using to have better and more meaningful conversations in English. Now if you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome! My name's Adriana from EnglishTeacherAdriana.com. I help English learners improve their English, boost their confidence to finally speak English confidently. If you'd like to drastically improve your confidence speaking in English, make sure to follow the next two steps. Step one, subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications so that you know you get the bell when I post my next video lesson here to help you improve your confidence speaking in English. Step two, download my free audio guide where I share with you exactly what you need to be doing every single day to get the confidence you deserve to improve your English and to finally speak English confidently. To download my guide, make sure to click the link in the description below this video, enter your name, your email address, and I will send you my free audio guide. Fantastic, you've done that. Let's learn how you can stop saying how are you and use these better advanced English vocabulary and phrases when speaking in English. Now the first phrase you could use is how's everything. Listen carefully and repeat after me how's everything. How's everything. We say this as if it were one word. How's everything. Guys this phrase is conversational. Great to be using in conversations. It is a little polite. It's not so formal. It is okay to be using with people in formal situations with people that you meet on a regular basis. Again the phrase is How's everything? How's everything? Now the phrase how's it going? How's it going? Again we pronounce this as if it was one word. How's it going? How's it going? Now this is a little less formal. It's great to be using with friends, family, people you don't have a formal relationship with. Again, how's it going? How's it going? Another great phrase you could be using in conversational settings could be how are things? How are things? Again, we say this as if it were one word, not how are things. No, it doesn't sound natural. How are things? How are things? Great phrase to be using in conversational settings with friends, family, people that you know really well. Okay, you can use it in more formal situations if you meet the people on a regular basis, but I wouldn't use this with somebody that you've met for the first time in a formal setting. Again, the phrase is how are things? How are things? I've exaggerated the z sound at the end because a lot of you really don't pronounce this. It is important. Again, how are things? How are things? Now a really informal phrase you could use is a phrase, what's up? What's up? I use this phrase really often, very, very often with friends, family, what's up? What's up? Now sometimes I can't be bothered and many English speakers also can't be bothered using the phrase what's up. You know, it's too long for us. So we use the shortened version, sup, sup. Great phrase to be using in text correspondence when you're messaging somebody, when you're chatting online, just sup, sup. Again, guys, I would like to highlight that these two phrases are extremely informal. Don't be using them in formal settings with your boss, with workers, if you don't have a good relationship with them. But if you do, it's okay to be using those two phrases. Now, the next phrase always reminds me of Joey from Friends, and that phrase is, how you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? Okay, I don't use this phrase often because it just reminds me so much of Joey from Friends, but a lot of English speakers do use this phrase. The phrase is, how are you doing? Wait, I can't even say that. Let me do that again, normally without that Joey intonation. How are you doing? How are you doing? This is a great phrase to be using when you just wanna know what's been happening, what's new. Again, how are you doing? How are you doing? Now the phrase what's new? What's new is a great phrase to be using with somebody maybe you haven't met in a long time, somebody that you meet all the time and just want to know what's new in their life. Instead of asking them how are you, you could use the phrase what's new and you get more information from them about their life and what's happening. The phrase again, pronunciation, what's new? What's new? There's no pause, it's not what is new, doesn't sound natural, say it properly. What's new? 
wants you. Now the phrase, are you well, are you well, is a really polite phrase. It's very polite when you want to ask somebody how they are. Now, you have to be careful with your intonation. You don't want to say, are you well? Because it doesn't sound like you're interested to hear if they are good or if they're bad or if they're well. Careful intonation, are you well, are you well, are you well, are you well? Now, personally, I don't use this phrase very often, but many English speakers do. If you'd like to sound more polite and formal speaking in English, this phrase is great to be using. Again, are you well? Are you well? Now, a variation of are you well, which I do use quite often, is a phrase, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? This is not as formal as a phrase, are you well? But it is still polite and formal. Again, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Careful, connected speech here. Also intonation is very important. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? The next phrase, what's going on? What's going on? Is a great phrase to be using when starting a conversation with somebody to hear what's news in their life. Instead of asking them directly how they're feeling, what's going on really starts a conversation and they may talk about their work, their hobbies, their family, their friends. It's a great question to be asking to starting the conversation. Again, what's going on? What's going on? Careful here, connected speech is not going on. You can say it like this, but it's more natural to say what's going on, what's going on. Now a phrase which is very similar to what's going on is a phrase, what are you up to? What are you up to? So maybe you've met somebody for the first time, you see they're doing something. Instead of asking them about their feelings, so how they are, you could ask them, what are you up to? And here you could see what's happening. So maybe what they're doing now in their life. Great to be using when you're meeting somebody after a long time, after a short time. It is a great phrase to be using in conversations in less formal situations. Again, what are you up to? What are you up to? Now guys, before we continue, if you love this video lesson and you'd like more vocabulary lessons, please do let me know by smashing that like button, like this video lesson, and also join the discussion in the comments below this video and tell me what other words, phrases, would you like to learn to improve your confidence speaking in English? Now the next phrase, how do you do? How do you do is very formal. It's very polite. I don't use it quite often. Many English speakers do. It is okay to be used if you're in a very formal situation. How do you do? How do you do? Now, a really informal way of asking somebody how do you do in English is howdy. Howdy. You may have heard this in American and even Australian TV shows. Howdy, great phrase to be saying, asking somebody how they are. I personally don't use this phrase as well. Other English speakers do, so it's great to be knowing what this phrase means. Again, howdy. Howdy. Now the phrase long time no see. Long time no see. This isn't necessarily a phrase asking somebody how they are, but it's just a general remark many English speakers make when they haven't seen somebody for a long time. I use this phrase quite often. If I haven't seen a friend in a long time, we're like, hey, long time no see. What's been happening? It's a great phrase to be adding in. I do it naturally, don't know why, but I do use it very often and many English speakers do. If you feel comfortable using this phrase, long time no see, to really emphasize the fact that you haven't seen somebody for a long time, go ahead and use it. Again, pronunciation, long time no see. Long time no see. Now the phrase, what's news with you? What's news with you? Great phrase to be using to find out what's been happening with that person you're speaking to. Again, what's news with you? What's news with you? Also the phrase, anything interesting happening in your life, great phrase to be using in conversational settings. When you've met somebody after a long time, anything interesting happening in your life. So here, by asking this question to somebody, you're not necessarily asking them how they're feeling at that moment of time, but you're asking them what's happening. So maybe at their work, with their family, in their hobbies, in their private life, with their health. It's very general, but it's a great phrase to be using to start the conversation. Again, Anything interesting happening in your life? Also the phrase, what's happening? What's happening? It is very similar to the phrase, what's new? You can use it in conversational settings. It's not very formal. I do suggest that you use this phrase with people that you know well. Again, the phrase is, what's happening? What's happening? Now the phrase, how are you holding up? How are you holding up? Careful pronunciation, it's not holding. You can pronounce it like this, but more naturally, a natural way native English speakers pronounce this phrase is, how are you holding up? 
How are you holding up? So we connect the G and the U at the end of holding and up, holding up, holding up. This is a great phrase to be using with somebody maybe that's gone through something really bad recently. For example, maybe somebody's sick in their family, they've experienced a tragic loss, or maybe something bad's happened to them. How are you holding up is a great way to see how are they feeling? So how are they going about the everyday activities and how are they confronting everyday tasks? For example, I met my friend Mary yesterday and recently her cousin passed away. She had a great relationship with her cousin and I know that she's been really sad over the last few weeks. Now, instead of me just asking her, how are you? I asked her yesterday, how are you holding up? So this basically is expressing that how are you going about your daily tasks, continuing with your life after your loss? Again, pronunciation, how are you holding up? How are you holding up? Now the phrase, how's life sailing? How's life sailing? So as we know, life is a journey and boats, they go, they sail on journeys. Here the phrase, how's life sailing, reflects this journey that boats go on. So the phrase, how's life sailing, is a really polite and formal way of asking somebody, how are things or how are you feeling? How's life sailing? Great phrase to be using in polite settings. I personally don't use it that often. Many English speakers do. If you like this phrase and you want to use it, go ahead and use it. Again, the phrase is, how's life sailing? How's life sailing? The phrase, how are things coming along? is a great phrase to be using, for example, in a work setting. So maybe you see your colleague, you're working on a project, you haven't seen him for about two days. You go to his desk and you say, hey Bob, how are things coming along with our project? So here you're being very specific. So you could here in this situation, we're specifically asking about the project, but if you'd like to be even more indirect, you could just say, how are things coming along? So we're talking about some sort of process, something that somebody is working on. Again, pronunciation, how are things coming along? coming along. Notice here connected speech coming along. How are things coming along? Now the phrase, how was your day? How was your day? It's a great phrase that I use quite often at the end of the day. For example, if I'm meeting somebody at the end of the day and I want to know how the day was up until that point. How was your day? Great phrase to be using in these settings. Again, pronunciation. How was your day? How was your day? How was your day? Now the phrase, how do you fare? How do you fit? It's a very polite and formal way of asking somebody how they are. Personally, I don't use this phrase very often, but it is used in many TV shows and by many English speakers. Again, how do you fit? How do you fit? Very polite. If you like this phrase, go ahead and use it. How do you fit? Now, how do you fit is really formal. But the next phrase, how's it rolling, is really informal. It's a great phrase to be using with friends, family, in informal settings. Again, how's it rolling? How's it rolling? So here, careful, it's not rolling. Don't roll the R, uh, ra, ra, rolling, rolling. How's it rolling? How's it rolling? Now, another really informal phrase, which I don't use very often, but you may hear in some TV shows and movies, is a phrase, how's it hanging? How's it hanging? Now, this is also a way of asking somebody, how are things? How is life? The phrase is, how's it hanging? How's it hanging? Very, very informal, guys, okay? Be careful when you use this phrase and who you use this phrase with. How's it hanging? How's it hanging? Now, if you're meeting a friend and you see that their face just doesn't look right, maybe they're upset, they're angry, they're shocked, you could use a phrase, what's with the face? What's with the face? Guys, here you are asking them how they are, but directly because maybe their expression in the face is weird and you don't understand why their expression is like that. What's with the face? Great phrase to be using in informal settings. Not the best to be using with your boss or in really formal settings, but it is good to be using in informal settings. Again, what's with the face? What's with the face? But a formal way of rephrasing this question, what's with the face, is with the question, is there anything concerning you? Is there anything concerning you? Careful pronunciation, concerning, concerning. Is there anything concerning you? Is there anything concerning you? This phrase is really good to be using in really formal settings. So with your boss, with somebody that you respect. Again, is there anything concerning you? 
Really great phrase to be using in formal settings. I use this one quite often. Again, is there anything concerning you? Now the phrase, what's the latest with you? What's the latest with you? Great phrase to be using in conversational settings with friends, family, people you have a good relationship with. It's not really formal. It is polite. You can use it with some colleagues you have a good relationship with and expresses that you would like to know what's news in their life. Again, the phrase is, what's the latest with you? What's the latest with you? Now the phrase, how are you keeping? How are you keeping is very formal. It's a formal phrase to ask somebody how they are, how they've been feeling, what they've been doing. How are you keeping? It is great to be using in formal and polite settings you may find yourself in. I personally don't use it that much, but if you do find yourself in formal settings, how are you keeping? How are you keeping? Careful pronunciation. Keeping, keeping. How are you keeping? Great phrase to be using. Now, an informal way of saying how are you keeping is by using the phrase, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? Notice here how the first three words are said as if they were one word. What have you been? What have you been? What have you been up to? What have you been up to? Also notice intonation goes up towards the end of the sentence. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? I use this phrase very, very often with friends, family, in informal situations. What have you been up to? Great phrase to be using to ask somebody what's news in their life, how they've been feeling, and to hear the latest about them. Again, what have you been up to? Remember guys, practice makes perfect. The more you practice and use your English, the faster you'll improve your confidence speaking in English. I recommend you watch this video lesson two to three times and apply the shadowing technique. If you don't know what the shadowing technique is, basically watch this video lesson and repeat out loud at the same time as me to improve your speaking skills. Remember guys, if you do this once, that's fantastic. You do it twice, even better. The better and the faster you'll improve your confidence speaking in English. Guys, if you found this video lesson useful, make sure to smash hit that like button. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know you get notified when I post my next video lesson here to help you improve your confidence speaking in English. Also make sure to check out these two video lessons here to further improve and develop your English. Thank you guys for being here, for watching this video lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in my next lesson. Bye for now.